Hey everyone, welcome to MacBreak Studio. Last week, Blackmagic Design released DaVinci Resolve 16.2. And like their previous updates, it's packed with new features and enhancements. But the page that got the most attention was the Fairlight page, making an already powerful sound editing tool even faster. The first change I would like to point out is improved features in the track section of the index. All track controls can now be accessed in the index, allowing you to lock a track, arm it, solo it, and mute it. Also, if the automation controls are enabled, you can arm a track for automation from the index. You also have the ability to reorganize your tracks by clicking and dragging in the index. This is a much welcome change, as before, you had to right click on a track header and choose to move a track one space at a time. The last change in the index is the addition of the Edit Index. The Edit Index allows you to quickly locate specific elements in your timeline. If you select an item in the Edit Index, it will be selected in the timeline, and your playhead will jump to it as well. Like other areas in Resolve, you also have the option of customizing the column layout. Up next are some changes to effect organization in the mixer. Before version 16.2, the effects were divided into three categories, Fairlight FX, AU, and VST. In version 16.2, the effects are organized by type, and any effects that you have favorited will appear at the top. While in this menu, I'll point out another addition. I'll navigate to the Uncategorized section, to Fairlight FX, and choose Meter. A floating meter appears over the interface. I'll solo the music track and hide the mixer in meters. Now I can still monitor specific track levels without taking up my interface real estate with the mixer and meters. It's a small addition, but one that some may find helpful. The next feature I'll cover is found in the right click menu in the timeline. I'll select two clips here. Right click and choose Bounce Clip to Files. This option allows you to perform a quick bounce of individual clips to your file system outside of DaVinci Resolve. In the window that appears, I'll choose where I would like to save my clips. I can add a tag, and choose a naming format. I have several options that include the clip name, tag, and or stem. I'll choose tag and clip name. Next, under format, I can choose whether I want multiple mono files, or one multi-channel file. If I am bouncing a stereo clip, Multiple mono files will create individual files for each channel. The multi channel option will preserve the channels, but they will be included in a single file. I'll choose one multi channel file. Next, you can choose 16 bit or 24 bit. I'll choose 16 and then click Bounce. Resolve bounces my two clips. I'll navigate to the location I chose earlier, and sure enough, there are my two clips from my timeline. Great. With the 16.2 update, Blackmagic also released a new royalty-free sound library that is available for download on their site. To locate the download link, navigate to the Blackmagic website, and scroll to the bottom and click on Support Center. Locate the latest download section, and scroll until you locate the Blackmagic Fairlight Sound Library download, and click the link designated for your software. At the moment, this is the only place I have been able to find a link. I hope in a future update, there will be a way to download the sound library from within Resolve. Once installed, I recommend relaunching Resolve if it was open. Back in Resolve, navigate to the sound library. Click here to reveal which library to search. Here we can see that the Fairlight sound library was successfully installed. I'll make sure it is selected, and in the search field, I'll type foot. Below, I get a list of all sound effects related to foot. I can then select one and play it back here. These sound effects are also available for use in the Foley sampler effect. Now we can take a look at the largest change in the 16.2 update, the edit selection mode. The edit selection mode is enabled by clicking this button here. The main advantage of using the edit selection mode is the ability to make edits during playback or recording. To show this very quickly, I'll zoom in slightly and start playback. 
Then click at the top of this clip here, making a point in time I would like to make my edit. Next, I'll press A to trim the head of the clip before my playhead reaches the clip. I'll do the same for the tail of the clip. You'll notice that we are still playing back and I have successfully made an edit here. Did you try the big key? Yeah. Uh, let's open the big key. It's not the big key. This does not work in selection and range selection mode. In those modes, the playhead is used to indicate the point in time for the edit. Using the edit selection mode, you can begin to edit the beginning of a long recording while it's still taking place, or make edits to a project while it's still playing back for QC in preparation for the next pass. Now, there are some more aspects of this tool that I would like to point out, but I'm not going to continually play back during this section. But know that what I show you can take place during playback and recording. First, even though editing is decoupled from the playback, if I pause and then resume playback, it will originate from the edit point I have designated. Do we lose them? To designate a point in time, you move your pointer into the top region of a clip. When the pointer turns into crosshairs, you can click to set your edit point. If you move your pointer into the lower half of the clip, it turns into a hand icon. Now when clicking, a range is set around my clip, it is selected, and so is the track. I'll press Option X to clear my range. If you double click at the top of the clip, it has the same functionality as clicking the bottom, selecting the clip, the track, and setting a range around the clip. I'll clear my range again. All the standard edit functionality works in this mode as well. You can trim, adjust the volume band, and add fades. You also have the ability to set edit points across tracks. With the edit point set on one track, Hold the command key and click on the top of multiple tracks to add additional edit points. Note the edit points will all be set at the same point in time. If you hold the shift key and click on the top of a track, it will set edit points on all tracks in between. Now, if I perform an edit, such as trimming the head of my clips by pressing A on my keyboard, you will see all clips with an edit point applied are trimmed. And to build on my first point earlier, I'll undo, begin playback, and then perform the trim again. Yeah. I can see this feature becoming very valuable, especially when a client or boss is reviewing your project and you spot a quick fix that is needed, but do not want to interrupt playback. I'll undo that. That covers the basics of the edit selection mode, but there is more. Right click in the timeline and you will notice some new menus at the bottom. The commands in these menus are not exclusive to the edit selection mode, but I will be showing them to you in the context of the edit selection mode. Also, these commands are not intended to be accessed here. It's a bit clunky, but are referenced here as reminders and give you the ability to apply keyboard shortcuts. The first menu I'll point out is the Edit Selection menu. These commands will modify your selection. First, I'll set a range around this clip here. And now if I press the apostrophe key, it will move my selection range to the next set of edit points in the selected track. After pressing it once, Notice that my range has shifted to in between my two clips. If I press that key again, my range is set around the next clip in the timeline. If I press it one more time, notice it does not fill the gap between my clips as before. That is because markers are treated as edit points. We can also work in reverse using the L key. I'll press L three times and now my selection is back where I started. You can also change which track is selected. I'll use the semicolon key to select the lower track and move my selection back up using the P key. If I zoom into the timeline, I can move the range forward and back one frame at a time using the period and comma keys. Returning to the contextual menu, the next set of commands are for extending the selection by adding the shift key to my previous commands, excluding the period and comma keys. I'll exit the menu, and while holding the shift key, I'll press the apostrophe key to extend my selection later in time. If I hold Shift and press L, I'll extend the selection earlier in time. I can also add tracks to my selection by pressing Shift P and Shift semicolon. There are no commands for deselecting tracks or shortening the selection, but I can command click any selected tracks to deselect them. And to shorten my selection, I can use the playhead and the I and O keys to set a new range. Returning to our new commands, let's take a look at Edit Selection Editing. 
The first is Trim to Selection. I'll zoom out of my timeline and set a range around the middle section of this music clip. Then I'll press Option T to trim the head and tail of the clip simultaneously. This is a great command for trimming excess media from clips. I'll undo that. The next command is Crossfade Selection. This allows you to quickly crossfade two clips. I'll set a range around this edit on my music track, then press F. And just like that, a crossfade transition is added to my edit. The last edit command is duplicate, which is pretty self-explanatory. I'll select this thunder crack sound effect, then press option D several times to duplicate the clip. Much quicker than copying and pasting. I'll undo that. The last set of commands are in the track waveform zoom menu. They allow you to increase and decrease the size of track waveforms without adjusting the size of tracks. Like the other commands I have shown you, you will need to map out your own keyboard shortcuts. I'll press Shift, Control, Plus, and Minus to adjust the size of all my waveforms. To adjust the size of just selected tracks, I'll press Shift, Plus, and Minus. To reset a selected track, I'll press Shift, X. To reset the size of all my track waveforms, I'll press Shift, Control, Z. This is great when working with an audio signal that is quite low but a larger waveform would help in making edits. If you like this tutorial and you want to learn more about Fairlight Audio Post, please check out my full Fairlight tutorial at rippletraining.com. And if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.